Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 3. Fasten your seatbelts, there's some great painting, and there's also some pretty weak stuff. Anyway, let's get started. All right, the first celebrity model is Ruse Kemp. He is a documentary maker, and he goes to dangerous places. <laughs> so he must be a journalist, well, obviously a journalist as well. So he certainly looks the part, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks like he can handle himself quite nicely. So four hours later, oh, I see, and that's why they put a map behind him. That makes sense. So four hours later, the artists turn their easels around, and he gets to his first look at what they've done. Now, this particular episode has some really questionable painting. And so let's hit it. Let's get it over with to start with. Here is the first one. Now, this is a watercolor, and you know that I'm going to champion absolutely any watercolorist who enters this program and is accepted in the program, but I cannot endorse this piece. It does not look like him. Proportions are way off. It's I mean, can you imagine spending four hours? What would you spend four hours on with this? I mean, this might take me 20 minutes at the most. Anyway, moving on. Here is the second choice that he has, and this is a very bold painting. Now, this particular artist shows up later, or earlier or later, I don't know, but she was familiar to me because she comes back to this show. She comes back as a landscape painter and also as a portrait painter at least a couple of times. So she's very qualified in what she does. Love the color value swap outs of putting cerulean blue in there. Oof, boy, that's so nicely done. She, she, is, she is, to me, a fearless painter. So I really enjoy this one. So, um, and it looks like him. It looks like him. We have a resemblance. This one also looks very much like him, um, which is great, but I don't know that it works as a painting, if you, if you know what I mean. I'm looking at two criterion, that it resembles the person and that it also will stand it alone as a fine painting. And I think the previous one we just saw definitely does. Whereas this one, I'm not so sure. I don't really see, other than getting the resemblance, which is super important, there isn't a lot of interpretation or telling us about either him or about the artist. All right, the next, so Rose picks, uh, Ruse, sorry, picks one to take home with him, and he picks this one. It's a little bit brutal in a way, but I think given what they say his job is and the world he lives in, that makes perfect sense and is definitely the one I would have chosen. And you see how it stands alone as a painting? Really stands alone as a painting. It's, it's absolutely complete. All T's crossed, all I's dotted. All right, the next one up is Freddie Fox. He's an actor and he's also was the lead in Kenneth Branagh's Romeo and Juliet. And I guess he has a passion for fly fishing. So they put all these flies behind him, which I find kind of delightful. Uh, the only thing I'm interested in when it comes to fly fishing, quite frankly, is the flies. I happen to work in a, a, a store that, that sold these things, <laughs> camping supplies and stuff. I was fascinated by flies, but, but I don't want to catch fish. So four hours later, the artists turn their easels around, and this is where the program goes downhill really, really fast. Now look at his reaction. His reaction is not delight. His reaction is holy smokes. How am I gonna say something good about this? Because this is a car crash. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done in his situation. Let's look at the first one. This is a watercolor. This breaks my heart. This is a watercolor. It's a watercolor by somebody who clearly doesn't know how to use watercolor to its full advantage. Does it look like him? No. Is a good painting on its own? No. It is, it, uh, that, I can't even talk about it. That's all I can say. We're moving on. Here's the second one. This is a very, very weak, very, very poor painting. It doesn't stand alone as a painting. It doesn't have a resemblance to him. I'm pitying poor Freddy. He has to say something nice. I think he says something like, you know, I like the colors or, Anyway, it's like when you see an ugly baby, you know, you say, ooh, what a nice outfit. That's what he was reduced to in this case. Here is the third one, and he said this looked very much like his father, which is interesting. I think it looked very much like him as well, and I do think it's a, a fine painting. I think it stands alone as a painting as well. I really like when the artist includes 
a background and makes choices about that. You know, it shows that they're thinking about the whole painting process strategically from beginning to end. Now let's pull back a little bit because we've been doing that lately and sometimes the things just don't hold up. It doesn't hold up as much when you pull back, but it is fun to see on the right the painting and on the left the model and see that they definitely do um, they resemble each other. So nicely done. So what will Freddie picks? His world is pick B. Well, it has to be this one because the other two were beyond questionable. How did they get in the program? Oh, I don't get it. At least once during these recaps, I find I say I don't get it. Okay, Vicki McClure is the next one. She's an actress. She's known for a series called Line of Duty, which is British, and later for being a murderous psychopath. How could that face be a murderous psychopath? <laughs> but certainly shows her range. And, I mean, she's a really beautiful woman. And so I'm not familiar with her face, but there are going to be some interesting interpretations coming up. So hang in there with me and let's see what happens. So four hours later, the art, artists turn their easels around. It's surprising to me that some of the uh, that middle piece is as unfinished as it is. You had four hours. My gosh, what were you doing? All right, so this is the middle piece, which is very unfinished. It doesn't look like her. I'm going to stand by that as a recapper, as an artist. In this competition, there has to be some resemblance. And this doesn't have it. It's also a tremendously weak painting. I mean, you're not going to remember this as soon as this recap is over. It's it, it's just, let's just say bland, tasteless. Oh, tasteless was a, oh, that's a bad dig. That was not nice. All right, back in the nice lane. Here's one that I really like. And you can see the whole canvas. This time we pulled back first, and now we're going to come in and look closer up. This is what I look, this is what, you look for in painting. There's, this is a reason for painting, is that you're going to interpret something and you're going to make it better than the photograph would have been or better than the model sitting there. It has a resemblance to her, but is it um, as accurate a resemblance as some others that have been in the program so far? No, but we're going to let that go. Um, now the next one is uh, done with pencil and charcoal. And I wanted you to see the effect because he's really doing all this cross, interesting crosshatch stuff. Um, he's very young and he got a resemblance. He got a very, very good resemblance. I think this is a really strong piece. And I think they're going to go for this because, as we said in past recaps, they're always looking for something different. And nothing like Nothing like this has come up before. However, for the finals, it's not going to, if he gets in the finals, it can't win because this can't be the commission, how the commission piece is done. All right, so let's see what Vicki's pick is. She really, she picked the crosshatch one. So that is going home with her. Now, this has nothing to do with the final judging. Now the final judging begins for the program. So all the artists are lined up nervous as anything, and they're in front of the setting that Ruse was in, so that map of the world, and waiting to find out who will be uh, one of the three finalists for this episode. So, let's see. The first one up, here are the three finalists that they chose. I wanted you to be able to see the artists next to their particular pieces, so that's kind of fun. Now, this year they're showing the entry photo you send in a digital image, and that's how you get selected for the program. There's the digital image on the left. He had as much time as he wanted to, and then the piece he spent four hours on today. He is tremendously competent, but I do not think he can win because for a commission piece in a major gallery, I think it has to be a painting, and this is, this is not that. But boy, he's young, and he's going to be fabulous. Here is the second one. Really, really, really enjoy that self-portrait on the left where she had unlimited time to work, and on the right, where she had four hours. So this is somebody who has a lot of technical skill, and if she's selected down the road to be in the finals, you can see when she has more time to work on a piece, the quality of her work goes up considerably. Although I enjoy the formality of what she did in the four hours. I kind of like informal work. The next one is the very um, somewhat brutal portrait, but she's pretty brutal with her own self-portrait there, and it looks exactly like her too. So I think she's a really strong contender. So self-portrait on the left, 
the entry today on the right. And very interesting because there, you know, when she had unlimited amount of time, there wasn't much of a difference. And that talks uh, very much about consistency as a painter over time. So that's great. So here are the three semifinalists waiting to find out who wins, which must be incredibly nerve wracking. Which one would you pick? I gotta think about that. I know which one I would pick, so you gotta be sure the judges won't pick that one. All right, the winner is dun 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 dun. dun. The winner is this one. They liked this one because they felt they always say the most painterly, and I agree with that. But it did not resemble her the same way the other two finalists' work did. So as usual, I end up a little bit baffled. But this is our third person who is going to go on to the semifinals. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please leave a comment and join my YouTube channel and let me know what you think. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.